Time for some boating adventures. Logging back into Incon, I appeared in my newly constructed skeleton grinder with an inventory full of arrows. In between last episode and this one, I decided that having my spawn point right next to a gas trapped void pit wasn't the brightest idea. So I returned to Sus Citadel to reset my spawn, farm some potatoes, and finally make a skeleton farm to take my arrow count from one to more than one. As for why I decided to make the farm off camera, it was a combination of wanting to save hard drive space and being embarrassed about my design. Don't comment with improvements, I don't care. Having farmed even more trees while the feds weren't looking, I made a lot of planks and torches before heading back through the Cavern of Carnage. On the way I made a falling zombie proof bridge to this island, but after seeing that it was covered with creepers, I put it right on the list of problems for future me. Entering the light blue wall, I was ecstatic to see that it was a water dungeon, everyone's favourite type of CTM area. My joy only increased when I saw the platoons of spiders and cave spiders spawning, so doing the logical thing, I jumped off this cliff into a lake whilst wearing a full suit of armour. Behind me, spiders. Above me, spiders. Ahead of me, <clears throat> you never guess. At least they didn't have Depth Strider. Uncertain, I headed to this island. I was doing an alright job of dodging the spiders until Zeus personally sent this guy from the fucking stratosphere to inflict me with poison. Undeterred, I entered this building, broke this spawner, and claimed the most disappointing treasure since Kung Fu Panda 1. Ignoring the nearby door to make my own exit, I continued my conquest to the next island, where I quickly broke this spawner and restored the karmic balance of the universe by repairing this wall instead of breaking it. The loot in this chest was actually decent, so after acquiring material wealth, I naturally abandoned my moral compass by breaking this wall right open again. In this other building was more stuff, but instead I headed to the roof and looted this chest labelled Stone Blocks, which didn't actually contain any cobblestone. I'll see you in court! After getting more stocking fella loot, I swam to this other island to raid this building. At this point, it's worth pointing out what I came to call Quail Cake's design, which occurs when a location has spawners or loot rather than both. Essentially, the spawners defend nothing, and the chests are just lying around waiting to be looted rather than being a reward for fighting mobs. Case in point, this house, which has challenging cave spiders defending the roof where the loot isn't. Well, had cave spiders. I obliterated that spawner! Clearly unsatisfied with how easy this had been, I immediately went upstairs and got myself poisoned again, twice. Going next door to this building, I was confronted with the opposite of Quail Cake's design. Normal design. When this suspicious chest turned out to be a trap. Unfortunately, this was ineffective due to two assets on my side. A brain, and my skeleton skull. Taking the building from above, I was able to recover this attack tree before pacifying these flame cultists and obtaining a Curse of Binding shovel. Incredible. With the most useful item of all time obtained, I swam over to the penultimate island to raid another building. This one had loot, but no spawners. A decision that even past me felt the need to complain about. I think there's kind of a major structural design error with this area. Like, there's like quite a lot of loot in the area and quite a lot of buildings. And yet all the spawners are outside the buildings. Or on the very top, where there isn't loot. It kind of has the elemental collapse white wall problem. I'm not sure if Quail Cake still makes maps, he hasn't been active in the CTMC for a while, but my honest feedback here is to make sure obtaining power for loot is a challenge, rather than a break from the challenge. I brought up Elemental Collapse, which I helped design, because we got criticism for the same issue, and I think that having loot be kind of free makes the map less fun, and even for a map meant to be painful like this one, it makes it less difficult too. So anyway, put that advice into Incon 2, Cruise Control. Raiding another spider infested house, a common practice in rural Australia, I found the same design issue where the roof was defended despite the loot being one floor below. However, while the map maker in me was um actuallying away, the rest of me was very happy to be given another axe. Especially after what happened back in 2008. With my inventory full of loot, I headed back to the intersection, only stopping to craft this boat and get into a battle with this water rider. I don't seem to drop anything that good either. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, hold on to that one, I shit you not, it will be relevant almost 12 episodes from now. After breaking this chest containing a boat, despite not having the space to pick it up, I set up a temporary stash at the dungeon entrance before heading right back in. After picking up this ground boat, I naturally chose to swim manually through the dungeon for fucking ages, before changing my mind and becoming Jack Sparrow. Approaching Wall Island, I parked by the lake and there was not another car in sight. What there were, was cave spiders. Rushing back to my boat, my plans went sideways when I began rowing back towards the island. So I jumped overboard and ate this shiny fruit before devising a new plan. Bridging. I was really breaking new ground here. 
The staircase construction went well. What the fuck? And soon I was on top of this wall. Heading towards the far side of the island, I quickly came across the wall, which looked relatively undefended. I was forced to retreat while pursued by spiders, which I killed easily with only several thousand bow shots before returning to the fleecy box area and doing the most moon unit thing ever. Building a bridge. Above the wall was a chest guarded by cave spiders, including this one that I almost managed not to get hit by. Talk about snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Rather than employing my original plan of waiting for the vines to grow down to the fleecy box, I instead built over this chest, murdered its defenders, and claimed the loot before taking on the wall like a human being. And by that, I do mean I run away. Again. After losing the spider horde, I returned to make my play and was confronted with this. Running around the edge of the island to get the spiders off my tail, I made one more pass of lighting up the fleecy box before finally breaking in and claiming the light blue wall. Wool acquired, I headed back out the front of the island and into the boat that I had conveniently set up earlier, meaning I could reverse out of the drive and speed down the highway before abandoning my vehicle on the side of the road. Harnessing my inner Scott Morrison voter, I collected these blocks of coal from the starting dock area. Before I could suffer the environmental consequences of my own actions, I left. Presumably to shit myself at a McDonald's. Heading back to Int 2, I deposited the wall and channeled my inner frosty Aesop by collecting these two furnaces. Given that I was now future me, I finished conquering this island by committing a drive-by on this charged creeper who was hanging out on his own property. Despite the possibility of harvesting creeper heads, I opted to delete both spawners before looting this chest, which contained a shield. Nice. This concludes my adventures in the light blue wall. I got a bit critical towards Quail Cakes' design in this episode, so I just want to round out by saying that I didn't mean any of it in mean spirits. Building a CTM is very difficult, people do it for free out of love of the genre, and it can be especially hard to adhere to good design when you're trying to make something so hard that you won't even consider properly playtesting it. Anyway, join me next week where we take on Yellow.